Okay, crossing subnets. All right. When we go from one subnet to another, it requires a router. And so basically you have a, a third party in there intercepting packets and saying packets from this range going here, jump across and go here. Okay. Um, this puts a double hop on the info. Um, it slows down the network speed and makes the PLC dependent upon the router for communications. You can't always not do this, but for the most part, I wouldn't do this. And, and now you're going to ask, well, I have a PLC and this PLC has 20 drives on it. Well, that's 20 IP addresses plus my PLC is one. Well, if you're in a situation like that, you typically buy a large control system and add a second NIC card that connects to the plant network while the rest is contained in its own little network. And that way you only have one IP address for the plant network. And all the drives and everything, you can still talk to them. You just browse through the PLC and go to them. So, um, it's best to try to keep your network straight as far as IP addresses go. And like I said, it all depends on the system. Now, you can even do serial to Ethernet adapters. They even have those. And guess how fast they are? As fast as the serial cable goes, but they'll go online. And you can browse across serial cables, uh, Ethernet to serial adapters. Here we talked about having two network cards. Um, so if you're going to have a large corporate network, like some of the plants around here, like Kraft, Kraft, every time their spec is if they put a control logics in, it has two Ethernet cards. And one of them is dedicated to the plant network, and the other is dedicated to whatever is hooked to that individual machine. And they're already crossing subnets because they're so large. They they have more than 255 PLCs online. And that includes HMIs, touch screens, all of that. They're already way past that. I don't know. They might be on their third one now. Um, we already talked about differential signaling. Um, and here's the answer that I had to look up, but it was in the PowerPoint. We're looking for a difference of 2.5 or negative 2.5 volt on Ethernet. Maximum run of Ethernet without a boost, which is basically a switch, is 300 feet. If you go over 300 feet, Ethernet probably won't work. Okay? And inside that net, NIC card, let me, let me tell, explain this to you. You may have a 100 megabyte connection, but inside there, between the two, whatever it's hooked to, it does packet detection and error and correction. So just because you have a 100 megabyte NIC card doesn't mean it's running at 100 megabytes. It might be running at 78. Now your your little laptop will always say 100. But depending on network conditions and lightning is going on outside or somebody flipped on the blender, it may not be running at 100 megabytes. It's variable. Just whatever it can get through there. It's just up and down, up and down. We don't mess with it. It's all done internal for the, the NIC card. So, crossover and straight through. As with serial cables, we have a different configuration. Um, if you want to hook your laptop to a PLC, you need a crossover cable. It doesn't work any other way. All right? If you have a switch and hook between them, most switches are smart enough to go ahead and flip them for you. Router switches, it doesn't matter. You can plug in a crossover cable or you can plug in a straight through cable, it doesn't matter because once it's in the switch, it automatically knows, hey, you plugged in a crossover cable, I need to flip these pins around and make it work. But if all you have is a laptop and a and an Ethernet cord, it must be a crossover cable to talk to. All right. Another number of times I got called, people like, Well, how did you do this? I saw you out here doing this, and we've been trying for days. I said, What kind of cable do you have? Well, I got one off out of the office. I said, Go to Radio Shack, ask for a crossover cable. And it will work. Okay, you got to have a crossover cable if you want to talk to a PLC without a switch. So that means you want to take your laptop up and plug up to it. You got to have it. Guess what else? Your IP address on your laptop NIC adapter has to be within that range of the IP address of the PLC, or it doesn't work either. Remember, we talked about 
192.168.1, that my IP address has to be in that same range of 192.168.1.20, whatever. It has to be in the same range. If it's not, it won't work. I, uh, a couple weeks ago, I had somebody call me up and I talked them through that same process. Okay, People forget. Their computers are set up for years and they go to a different computer and it's not working and usually what it is. Um, so, guidelines for PLC Ethernet network. Don't double hop anything for control if you can keep from it. That means keep everything on the same subnet. Always use 255, 255.255 unless instructed by IT to use something else. Never, ever, ever use DHCP unless maybe using data collection. But um, Another rule is to keep your PLC network off the internet. Let me repeat that. Keep your PLC network off the internet. And you're going to ask me why. Well, it has already started that the hackers have developed viruses to infect um, HMI or SCADA systems. Now, granted, somewhere in the tagline is CIA infects Iranian nuclear centrifuges running Simmons SCADA systems, but it's out there. And it's just a matter of time before it happens, and we don't want viruses floating around the PLC network. Okay? Well, I mean, it's really, it's not, it's a very niche margin, but it is possible. Okay? Because basically, PLCs have very minimal security unless you set it up, and most people don't bother because it's an isolated network. So don't hook it to the internet. And you're going to ask, how do you remote into it? Well, you have a computer that you turn on that maybe you, you connect to a wireless thing and people can remote into that computer and program with that. Or you have a cable, because they have, they have adapters. Alan Bradley sells adapters or third party sell adapter. You can hook them to a phone line or whatever. You take the cable when you have a problem and you plug it into the internet. And then the guy logs in and does all these troubleshooting. And when he's done, you go over there and you unplug the cable out of the wall until the next time. But it's not a good idea to just leave your, your PLC network exposed to the internet. Because you, another reason is that gets IT involved, and they're like, well, we got to block port so and so, and we got to do this. PLCs, they need an open network. Uh, I could, you can dig through there and get the list of ports, but I've never seen anything but problems when you had a managed switch running a PLC network, because there's always some ports or glitches or something that's blocked and stuff doesn't work the way it's supposed to. You need just an open network. Everything goes. So, because, you know, these these don't have firewalls. If you want a firewall for your PLC network, you put in a third Ethernet or second Ethernet card, plug that in the Internet. The only way they can go through there is, is to have the Allen Bradley software, and you can password the processor, and it's pretty much locked out. They can't get through it. So, anyway. Now, the above being said, a Control Logics Ethernet card can be installed in a rack but not inserted to in the program. So remember we talked about these are smart cards. I don't know if we brought this up, but Control Logics have smart cards. SLC were stupid, stupid cards. So we can basically take an Ethernet card, plug it in a rack. The PLC doesn't even know it's there, but it magically works. We do all the configuration with the Ethernet card. And the PLC, you can talk to, do all kinds of stuff with it. The problem being is if it's not inserted in the program, the PLC doesn't know the path to use to send a message out of it. You can send stuff into it, but you can't send stuff out of it. And so you can initiate data transfers from a PLC unless it knows the card's in there. Uh, once again, here are some setups here. Uh, free software, tech support. Um, I use this class for different classes. I have little module classes that I teach non-credit, so you're getting the, the full version. Basically, I combine them all into this class. Are there any questions about Ethernet so far? All right, you're gonna get. You're gonna have to do it yourself and set this up. So now I'm going to show you. 
your number one super friendly tool to figure out why stuff doesn't work. And that is going to be, I'm going to go to start, and you can follow along with me. Um, we're not even going to, we're going to use built-in command props. Let's see if I can get this changed over without locking up again. No, 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 no. It just messed up. Okay. Well, 